Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Reverend Essie. I'm coming at you on Wednesday, uh, February the 27th, 2008. And I pray that your evening was fine and you slept well and you feel full and healthy this morning. Um, I, I figured what I would talk on today would be uh, Daniel and the lion's den. We all like to hear biblical stories, amen. And this is one of the uh, very interesting stories that I really like in the Bible. So if you don't mind, turn your Bible to the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And as you're turning, I hope you have your Bible. And as you're turning to Daniel, I want to um, open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for being God in the heavens above all gods, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we thank you for keeping us safe last night as we slept. And we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God, to a new day. You said new mercies for each day. And we thank you for the new mercies that we see. And we thank you for taking care of our families, Lord God, and, and just being God all by yourself, sitting high and looking low, Lord God, bringing us through all of the things that we go through in our lives and all the experiences, Lord God. And we could say we are still here because of your grace and your love. We could say that we're still here. I ask right now, Lord God, to let your Holy Spirit teach us things about Daniel and the lion's den and touch our hearts from things that we didn't even realize before as many times as we heard this story. Every time we read your Holy Word, Lord God, we learn something new. And we ask right now that you give us something new, something fresh and something new. The body of God, the body of Christ needs fresh word. And that's what we're asking you for today, Lord God, is fresh word. Bless each and every person that's listening to this, Lord God. Let this seed be planted all, all throughout the planet. In Jesus' name, I'm not doing it for fame, and I'm not doing it for fortune, Lord God. I'm doing it because I love the Word of God. I love teaching and preaching and singing the Word of God. So bless all the listeners at the sound of my voice. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. If you turn to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. Uh, the first thing you read is another one of those incidents where Israel was captured. Every time Israel disobeyed God, they were captured by another people. And in this instance, it's King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm sure you heard of King Nebi. Amen. <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, this is where Israel was being punished for the lack of diligence towards God. See, when you have a lack of diligence towards God and you don't do the things that you know you're supposed to do, you pay for it. Amen. You pay for it. Uh, in, in verse 1, hmm. I'll go on and I'll read. In the, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, unto his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Verse 5, And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Betelshashar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and Mishael was Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. 
And verse 9 says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. See, Daniel had favor. Notice that whenever a country is captured, whenever Israel is captured by another country, the first thing they ask for is the smartest of all the children, the smartest of all. They want the best of the people of that nation. And Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were intelligent children, which means they were raised right. Somebody was raising them right. Somebody raised them up. Uh, the Bible says you raise a child in the, way, in the way he should go, and when he gets older, he will not depart from it. Someone was raising these children correctly. Amen. And they became the king's favorites. Now, as we read, you can see Daniel was not your usual kid. Daniel didn't sit around playing Wii or PlayStation all day long. Amen. Now notice in, in uh, verse 17 to 20 of chapter 1. Now read 17 to 20. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king uh, had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel. See, Daniel was special. Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, therefore, stood they before the king. Verse 20, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. The king found these children, these wise children, ten times better than all of his magicians and astrologers. See, that goes to show magic is not better than God. We need to get that message. Magic and astrology is not better than the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It says he found him ten times better than magic. Amen. <laughs> so all everybody out there doing their little white magic or black magic, it's all magic. It's all a, 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 you're, they're rep trying to replace God in their lives is it's trying to get rid of the power of God and trying to be better than God and you can't be better the createe will never be better than the creator see they were ten times better Daniel's calling the calling on Daniel's life was to display the might and power of the Hebrew God demonstrating that this was no local deity, but the one true God of the entire universe. That was his calling. And that should be your calling, to display the power of God to the entire universe. You are to display the power of God. How timid are people nowadays who call themselves Christians? Amen. They run into a witch or they run into uh, somebody does voodoo or, and it scares them to death. They're scared to death. They say, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with that. No, you know what? You better act like you have power over those powers or they will get you. And they won't have to go through your food to do it. Amen? If you remember, in the, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul was sitting down and he was making food, they were cooking food and everything, and him and him, him and him, the people he was fellowshipping with. And, uh, and he reached down in a bundle of twigs, and he got bit by a snake. Jesus, like so much of us, <laughs> in different ways we get bit by snakes. But the thing is, how do we handle it? The Apostle Paul got bit by a snake that was laying in the twigs, and everybody sat around waiting just to see if he was going to die, because it was a poisonous snake. Mm. And Paul never died. He never got sick. Nothing ever happened to him. This is how you too should be. Whenever snakes bite you, whoever these snakes are, whatever name they have, when they bite you, you shouldn't die. You shouldn't let it bother you. Just keep on keeping on. Amen? That was Daniel's calling, to display God's power. Now the other three children that were with him, notice their names changed. 
That's what happens when, when one nation of people get caught by another nation of people. They most likely change their names, just like slavery here in the United States. They, everybody's name. I'm sure you watched Roots, right? And they kept beating him. The Kunta Kente was his African name. And they kept beating him and beating him. They said, what's your name, boy? And he would say, Kunta Kente. And they beat him some more. name boy Kunta Kente he was strong he wouldn't tell, he wouldn't say his, his, his given name and, and finally he got weak and they beat him so bad he gave in and they said what's your name boy and he said Toby see their names get changed we weren't Debbies and Donnas when we came over here not not the of the African persuasion no, I realize everybody I'm talking to is not of the African persuasion but maybe even your people right <laughs> we had uh, Irish people and Chinese people built the railroads and, and, and I think just about everybody in some kind of way was under some sort of uh, influence under, of another uh, people in some kind of way. Amen. And, and if you notice, uh, their names were changed from soft sounding names to hard names. Not all the time, but m most of the time whenever one country is taken over by another one people is taken over by another. The people that took over have hard sounding names. And the ones that were taken over, uh, the ones that were taking, taken over had like softer names. Not, not in all instances, but I noticed in, in, in a lot of times uh, th their names have changed to hard, from soft sounding names to hard sounding names. Like for instance, Daniel's last name, I mean Daniel's name ended up with, the last three were I-E-L. I-E-L, Daniel. Ariel. If you look in the Bible, you'll see that there's a lot of names that end with E-L or I-E-L. Let me tell you about the I-E-L and the E-L. I-E-L means small, skinny, thin. I-E-L means a small version of God. Daniel, small version of God. Now, why, wasn't, why didn't Jesus' name end with I-E-L? Even when it was Yeshua, his Hebrew name, Yeshua, even though God's in his name also. And because Jesus wasn't a small version of God, Jesus was God in the, fl in the flesh. He had all power. He had all power. Not part of God's power. Jesus had, ooh, Lord have mercy. Jesus had all power, praise God. Mm, 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 mm. And E-L, I-E-L means a small version of God. And E-L, when you see um, E-L like El Elyon, that means God, Father. E-L, Father, God. It's Semitic for God. Mm. Amen. So you, this just goes to show us that we need to watch what we name our children. There's so many people out there naming their children these strange names, and they don't even realize what the name means. Amen. They don't even know it. Watch what you name your child. Jacob, in the Bible, I'm sure many of you have re heard about Jacob, read about Jacob. His name meant supplanter, which means to take the place of. How many, how many people do we know out there, uh, uh, siblings, where one sibling wants to take the place of the other one because they're jealous of their looks or jealous because they have And his father favored Esau. So his mother helped Jacob to put fur on his arms to make his old blind father think that he was Esau because Esau was hairy. And see, Jacob knew that, he, that if he did this, he would get Esau's blessings. His father was to bless Esau. And Jacob did it and got the blessings instead of Esau. And in fact, when, ja when Jacob and Esau was born, Esau was coming first. He was coming out of his mother first. And Jacob was holding on to Esau's heel as they came out of their mother's body. He was a little, he wasn't even born yet. And he, <laughs> and he was scheming. He came out on, holding on to his brother's heel. Mm, mm -mm. If you want to read about that, it's Genesis 25, 25. First uh, Chronicles 4, 9. Jabez. J his mother gave him the name Jabez because she said she bore him with sorrow. Jabez means that, you, he, that he was born with sorrow. He was a sorrow maker. See? See, there's different ways, different, different reasons why you name your child what you name your child. Hopefully positive names. 
But we all know what happened to Jabez. He got blessed. When he prayed to God, he got blessed. He had to call on God. God was all he had left to get blessed. Hence, the Jabez prayer. 1 Chronicles 4.10 Back to Daniel. Daniel had favor with the king. He interpreted dreams and so forth. In chapter 6, we'll see, we see the jealousy entered into everybody that was around him. Daniel chapter 6. I'm kind of skipping chapters here, but we're, we're getting to it. Daniel, chap, Daniel chapter 6. People began to get jealous of him because the king found no error in him. Daniel was faithful. There was no fault in him. And people began to get upset about that. Daniel's excellence was rubbing them the wrong way. Daniel was considered had, of having an excellent spirit, and it was rubbing people the wrong way. This is what I call this, the brother and sister sandpaper syndrome. Amen. Amen. Brother, each one of us have a brother or a sister sandpaper in our lives. It's somebody, don't you just have somebody in your life that just rubs you the wrong way? Rubs you the wrong way. No matter what you do, you can't seem to get along with this person. You might even smile in their face and they might smile in yours, but something about them just rubs you the wrong way. Amen? Mm. They may be rubbing you the wrong way, but at the same time, they're fouling out your rough edges. Amen? Iron sharpeneth iron. You might be somebody else's brother or sister sandpaper. You might rub somebody else the wrong way. But you are filing out their rough edges. They smooth you out. And that's what you're doing to them. You're smoothing them out. Iron sharpening iron. Amen? All right. Amen. Nobody's better than the other. Everybody got one. <laughs> oh, my. I'd say Judas was Jesus's. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And Judas knew. Mm, 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 mm. Something about Jesus just rubbed Judas the wrong way. He thought he can get rid of that problem with money, and it didn't work. Mm. Now, what happened was, which happens in our lives as well, people that disagree with you, they'll all get together and have a meeting when you're not around. Isn't that usually how it goes? They get together and they have a meeting when you're not around so they can discuss what they want to do with you. You're just getting on their nerves. Hey, Sally is getting on my nerves or Jim's getting on my nerves. What are we going to do about this problem? And meanwhile, Sally and Jim's nowhere to be found. They all get together and have a meeting. And what they did was they knew Daniel got down three times a day mm, at the window and prayed to his God. Amen. So what they did was they came up with a decree that all should worship the king or be cast into the den of lions. How scheming is that? They knew what they were doing when they did it. They knew that this is what Daniel did on a daily basis. See, your enemies will check you out. Your enemies will watch you, everything that you do, and they will use your own activities against you and this is exactly what they did to Daniel they used his own activities against him that's what I call entrapment isn't it that's entrapment people will try to entrap you and get you into a situation whereas you will you will uh, be in trouble for something that you did and didn't even realize that you were doing wrong they'll take it and they'll turn the tables on you Amen. They entrapped Daniel. This also shows us that high-ranking officials of any kind must make sure that their under-ranking officials are not undermining their power or abusing their own powers. And this is especially in a church. Pastors, when pastors put somebody in, in, a, in, a, in a certain position in the church, they have to make sure that person uh, deserves to be there and has gone through all the trials and tests that they need to go through before they put them into, you know, there's too many pastors nowadays putting people, oh my God, I'm going off my notes again, but I can't help it, the Lord's bringing it up. There's too many pastors nowadays that are putting people into positions, one, for money, and two, because they just want that entourage. How many pastors do we know have to have 13, 14 ministers behind them so that they can look good 
it's all for show. You know what? Jesus didn't have an entourage. Jesus had disciples that were out there getting something done. They weren't just sitting up in a pulpit every Sunday looking pretty. They were getting things done. Amen. They didn't have uh, names for their ministries, and, and they didn't uh, write to the tax company and get uh, EIN tax. Numbers so they could report how much they. <laughs> oh God, you know. Then here you have uh, the ministers, uh, and 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 they're taking better, more care of the pastor than they're taking care of the body of Christ. The people in the body of Christ getting all their bills shut off. Amen. They don't have no food in their cupboards. Oh my my, I go on and on about that, but. We'll end it there. <laughs> Amen. So people in high ranking places need to make sure that the people who are considered underneath them are doing what they are supposed to do. Amen. Isn't that called undermining? They call undermining. The king had to put Daniel in the lion's den because of his own rules. There was something called the king's rule. If you look in Esther... I believe yeah, Esther 119, it tells you, you can also read, it mentions about the king's law. The king's, that's what's called the king's law. And see, this law was created about putting people in the lion's den if they don't bow down to the king. And therefore the king had to put Daniel, not only did the king have to put Daniel, well he could have really changed the law because he was a king. But I believe the king put Daniel in the lion's den not just because he didn't want to make himself look like a fool by, by creating this law, by going by this law, but also because the king had seen, uh, between chapters uh, Daniel 1 and, and Daniel 6, the king was seeing the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, ministry that Daniel had and the miracles and the signs and the wonders that God was doing in Daniel's life and in the king's life. Because remember now, Daniel was interpreting dreams and everything for the king. Amen. So I believe the king was 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 uh, uh, developing his faith in Daniel's God all along. He might not have told anybody, but he believed in God. He believed. He saw. He saw. He showed more faith in Daniel's God by putting Daniel in the lion's den than getting Daniel out of trouble by forcing his power over the princes. Think about it. He showed more faith by putting Daniel in the lion's den. Why? Why do I say that? Because he knew that God wouldn't allow anything to happen to Daniel around those lions. I don't know about you. I call it faith. Amen. Now, uh, chapter 6, verse 14 says that the king labored about this. Chapter 6, verse 14, I'll read it. It says, and then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. See, the king, his heart was saddened about this whole situation. He didn't want to do that. He loved Daniel. He had a love for Daniel. Amen. He labored. He was upset. He moaned, possibly prayed. He was in deep thinking about this situation because the law of Medes and Persia, which is Iraq and Iran, okay, it could not change. Amen. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, chapter 6, verse 16. Which says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, this is what he told Daniel, now see. Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Notice he didn't say, may he deliver you, or he might deliver you, or, or think about it, Daniel, or he could deliver you. He said, thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. That's faith if you ask me, that's encouragement. Confidence in God. The king had confidence in God. He believed in the divine deliverer. Amen. By now, he believed that Daniel's God was a divine deliverer. 
Even the king fasted and couldn't sleep. His soul was unrested. He was worried about Daniel. The king knew good when he saw it. And this is my, my message to you today. If you live a righteous life, higher ups will see that you're a good person. You will attract good. If you live good, you attract good. If you live bad, you attract bad. Amen. You attract thieves and liars and deceivers and such. Daniel was good. Verse 22 says uh, that they found uh, innocency in him. God found innocency in Daniel. Verse 22 says, My God has sent this angel, his angel, and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. See, the, the king ran down to see if Daniel was okay, and Daniel was still there. He was still there, laying with the, laying with the, laying with the lions, laying with the enemy, and the enemy couldn't even hurt him. <laughs> How many of us are believers of Jesus Christ and we could be laying right with the enemy and the enemy can't touch you? You know why the enemy can't touch you? Because Jesus said so. Amen. It's that simple. The enemy cannot touch you because Jesus said so. All right? Just like the snake. The snake might bite you physically, but he ain't going to hurt you. Nothing's going to happen to you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Everything that rises up against you shall fall. Please believe that. Even if you write it down on a piece of paper or type it up on your computer and print it out in little pieces, little slivers, and cut it and put it on your refrigerator and on your doorpost, put it all over on your bedpost, put on anything that rises up against you shall fall. Amen. Daniel had spent the night with the lions in the lion's den and did what he was supposed to do. So guess what? The king had to let him go. The king set him free. Verse 23 says that Daniel believed in his God. See, all this happened because Daniel believed in his God. He did not second guess him and say, oh, well, you know, I believe if Daniel would have went in there with fear in him, if he would have been dropped down into that lion's den and had fear in him, they would have ate him up. It reminds me of King Saul. Mm. Everybody remember King Saul and David? David came up behind him and became king. What did King Saul do? He always feared something. You know, uh, Samuel told him, he said, I'm going to be gone. It's going to take me a couple days to get to you, but don't slaughter any of the of the." Of the uh, lambs until I get there I'll do that it was up to it was up to Samuel the prophet to do that so uh, King Saul looked around and he looked up on all the mountains and in the woods and he saw all of his enemies surrounding him and what happened he got scared fear entered into him and we all know how all that ended up right he lost his kingdom Samuel told him because of your disobedience see you lost your kingdom, and not only that, Samuel went to a witch and asked the witch what he was supposed to do for the next day whenever the war was coming on, and he lost the war. He died, his son got killed, and it was over. Fear. If you believe that something bad is going to happen, it most likely it will. Amen? Have no fear that your spouse is going to leave you. Have no fear that your child's going to flunk in school. No fear of lack. Half of the people in this world are lacking because they fear lack. And look what happens to people when they get that fear and they want to, uh, what's it called, hoarding. Uh, they don't want to get rid of anything, boxes or whatever, and papers, and so they, because they become hoarders. That's a sin. The Bible says, I think it's in Psalms, Proverbs or Psalms, where it says, "I've seen a, a, a what is it? I've seen um, an error under the sun, where a person keeps things to their own hurt." 
And that's what happens to hoarders. They, keep, they, they get that fear in them and they keep things unto their own hurt. They have so much mess in their house, they're scooting with their foot. They're walking through a path of junk to get to the bathroom. I knew a woman that lived like that one time. She was a very heavy set woman, and she used to actually uh, uh, urinate through her lazy boy chair because she was too big to, and, and too lazy to get to the bathroom. She had so much junk piled up in her house that there was actually, there was literally a path from her lazy boy chair to the bathroom and to the re uh, refrigerator to eat. And when she finally moved up out of that house, her parents had died and she was going through a depression and everything. She's a wonderful person, beautiful person, but fear entered her heart. And when I finally, I got her out the house. And I, I brought her to safety. I got her out of that old nasty, dingy, dirty house. With, she looked like the queen. I'm not trying to crack a joke, but she looked like the queen of, of the fly. She literally had bugs flying around her head. She would sit in that lazy boy chair and there were little bugs flying around her head. And I got her out that house. And I, got, and, and I helped her to get somebody to buy it. They bought it for not as much as they could have gave it to her for but she got out of that dirty house and when those new people took over that house they literally had to get two people to go in there with trucks outside big trucks outside and they had to take uh, uh, uh shovels and scrape the floor they had to scrape the floor with shovels and and put all that junk in in a ton tr uh, i guess two ton trucks or whatever i forget what they call them things because she had urinated the urine uh, from her body had gone through the lazy boy chair onto the floor and started to capture onto the pizza boxes in the old mail and 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 uh, postage boxes things that she was getting you know she would just get things chicken bones and eat and throw it on the floor and the urine was mixing in and blending in with that and it hardened it hardened like like a cement and they had to scrape it all because of fear her parents died on her and she got fear she didn't like being alone she was scared didn't know what to do and she just ate and got bigger and bigger i mean it's, this is what fear can do to you it causes you to lose your kingdom that god gave you do not fear amen Every day you get up, you say, I am beautiful because God said I am. I'm a good man. I'm a good woman because I believe in God's son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I for please forgive me for everything I've ever done that was against you that was wrong. Forgive me for those sinning times, Lord God. I love you. Start me all over again. You cannot lose. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. And and then if, if we, as we read the end of end of this, this is what I like. This is what happens to your enemies. As we read the end of this, the people who went against Daniel ended up dying themselves. They tried to kill Daniel, and they ended up dying. Go to Daniel chapter six, verse. Let me make sure I have the right verse here. For, yeah, here we go. Go to Daniel chapter 6, verse 23. Daniel 6, 23, and I'll read on. And it says, Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. Verse 24, it says, And the king commanded... And they brought those men which had accused Daniel. See, the underminers, the underminers in your life. The king made them bring them, and they cast them into the den of lions themselves. See, the people who tried to undermine the king and the people that tried to undermine Daniel got thrown into their own trap. Your enemies will get, <laughs> will get thrown into their own trap. They cast them into the lions. Them... And check us out, their children and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces or ever, they came at the bottom of the den. The lions ate up the, the men who came against the, the, the higher ups, amen, so watch who, you, watch who you talk about, make sure you know what you're talking about when you talk about somebody who's higher up. The lions ate them up, ate up their children, their wives. Which goes to show, it proves to us, that parents' sins do affect the children. 
the sins of the parents affected the children but why it affected the children because they did not believe in the Hebrew God if they would have believed in Daniel's God I'm sure God would have forgave them and they could have started all over they did not believe they did not repent we have to repent in our lives you must repent of your sins don't go to bed at night not repenting of your sins you don't want to wake up somewhere else amen please repent that's what God that's what Jesus came down for Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood so you could repent the water that came out of him represented the word of God and the blood came out of him represented your divine covering Jesus' blood is your divine covering. It's the only reason why you're still alive today. The blood of Jesus. Amen. So then the king makes a decree in favor of Daniel's God. Verse 26 to 28. I'll read 26 to 28. It says, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end he delivereth and res rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth see signs and wonders in heaven and earth the king sought who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian this goes to show that godliness is profitable. It's profitable to all. Godliness is profitable to all. These preachers keep preaching about prosperity. Here is the prosperity. There's prosperity in serving the God of the heavens and miracles and the Hebrew God amen amen the only pros the only true prosperity that you can have that lasts and will never go away is pro is is believing in the hebrew god believing in god himself for those that don't believe i feel sorry for you if you're still waiting for the big boom you're going to miss the silent voice and that's my message today Daniel and the lion's den my question is who is trying to undermine you pray about it if you have anybody in your life that's trying to undermine you and trying to put you down and trying to mess up your ministry or your job or your family your health or anything pray about it do like Daniel he Daniel got down and prayed three times a day out of the window People began to hate him because he prayed so much. Isn't that something people hate you because you pray? How bad does that get? Well, God bless you. This is Reverend Essie signing off. You can write me at Esther Scott, um, E-S-T-H-E-R-S-C-O-T-T-1257 -T at yahoo.com. Or you can email me also at Lady Rev, which is L-A-D-R-E-V, 1257 at verizon.net. God bless you. And remember, Jesus is the only Lord.